We'll do the thumbs up, thumbs down again, just like we had done last time, but we'll, we'll work through that. And votes, Jessica, we're gonna need your assistance. All right, uh, welcome everyone to this planning board meeting, Wednesday, July 15th, 2020. Uh, first item on our agenda is a roll call. Looks like we have a full crowd this evening. I see David Thompson, I see John Beckett, I see Joe Sprecker, I see Mike Costello, Lisa Buck. Welcome back. I see Judd McIntosh, Krista Swinzer. Uh, that cover everybody? I think so. And myself, Phil Ruck. Uh, next up, acceptance of the agenda. Can I get a motion? All right. I see hands. Lisa, your hand went up. So, so Jessica, moved. you can watch the video. So we have a motion. Can I have a second? I'll second it. Very good. Uh, Mike Costello seconded that, Jessica. Uh, any discussion? I, I do see our ordinance discussion is on the agenda this time. Last time we had a pretty full slate. I'm I'm not sure. I you know I do see under new business down there that we have a new application. I hope they don't have to wait too long to discuss that. But uh, Kyle, I, I assume we can move through the uh, item four B fairly quickly. I hope. Correct? Uh, correct. I think so. It's just a few changes that were recommended, so it should be not too That's long. what I thought. All right. Well, we'll leave it as it is then. So I have a second. Or I have a motion. I have a second. Uh, no uh, further discussion. I have a question. It occurs yeah. to me I wasn't at the last meeting, so I'm not sure I can second the minutes. Yep. Yeah. Um, that, is, that is correct. We're not at minutes yet. Oh. So oh we're on agenda, agenda now, so we'll Sorry. be on minutes next. So... <laughs> We'll, we'll get to you in a second. <laughs> All right, so uh, Jessica, can you do a quick roll for vote, please? Dave. Dave Thompson. Affirmative. All right. John Beckett. 10-4. Joe. Joe Sprecher. Joe, you up? That was an affirmative. Okay. Uh, Michael Costello? Yes. Krista Schwenzer? Yes. Lisa Buck? Yes. Judson McIntosh? Yes. Bill Rock? Yes. All right, uh, moving on, we have approval of the minutes of the June 17th, 2020 meeting. We can take comments and Lisa's point, because she was absent, she cannot vote on this. So uh, any comments? I guess actually first, I'm gonna, uh, can I get a motion? I move we accept the minutes. Very good, thank you, Krista. Can I get a second? second? Who, who seconded that? Did I see John? John. Very good. Uh, discussion, any comments on, on the minutes? I'd just like to comment that I thought they were <clears throat> very well done and that it was really helpful to have that whole discussion that we had with all the input from the community. Very good. I, I agree, uh, Jessica. That Thank was, you, Krista. That was a great, job. great job, Jessica. Other, other comments, edits, anything? Page three, issue two. Eternal, maybe for a church is right, but I think it probably should be internal. Could you, it, I didn't catch that. So page three. Issue where, two. Where, I understand what he meant, oh, Phil. Okay. I can see the, I can see Got the it. issue. Great. Thank you, John. Other, other Thanks, John. Top, okay. Other edits? Comments? Uh, seeing none, I guess we have a motion second and the one edit. Uh, all those in favor, Jessica, can you plow through the, the roll again, please? Dave Thompson? Affirmative. John Beckett? John, you John Beckett? Yes. Joe Sprecher? Yes. 
Michael Costello? Yes. Krista Schwenzer? Yes. Lisa Buck? She can't vote on this. She's abstaining. Right. Yeah. Got it. Just one sec. Let me make a note of that. Uh, Judd McIntosh? Yes. And Phil Rock? Yes. Uh, That's seven four one abstaining. Very good. Uh, moving on, old business. We have a continuation of a minor site plan review application for an accessory use at 36 Oak Street that would allow Verizon Wireless to place equipment within the steeple of the structure. Just to remind everybody, this is a continued public hearing. Uh, we did uh, receive quite a bit of comment participation uh, from, from the public last time and uh, we, we had resolved some of the major issues and there, there was still uh, uh, one primary issue remaining. So my understanding is the applicant has provided us some information. If the applicant could give us a summary, then we'll talk to Kyle just to get his comments and then we'll uh, comments from the board, then we'll open it up again for, for public comment, a continuation of that public hearing. So can I hear from the applicant? Uh, Phil? Tell us what has changed since we saw you last. Phil? Oh, that's right. Uh, thank you. Judd brought to our attention, and I didn't catch it either, Judd. I, I know you have apartments there, but Judd has mentioned that uh, he's in a butter. Uh, he, he owns the apartment buildings that are right next to the church. We just didn't catch it last time. It's my uh, fault. Uh, yeah, it, that happens. It was a good reminder to me, Judd. I just, you know, I need you to pay attention if you think you're near a project or can't be uh, objective ab about, you know, our discussion, then that's what this is about. Judd brought it up uh, again. He, he feels he could be unbiased. I, I think that was uh, fairly evident from the discussion last time, but I, I did agree with him. I, I think it might be better off that he does uh, recuse himself uh, from review, other comments. That, that was my take on this. You know, high profile. I appreciate the input uh, from before, Judd. But uh, with this one, I, I think it might be best that that he recuse. So, is there any comment on that? Do you all agree, more or less? Thumbs up. Okay. Uh, thanks, Judd, for bringing that up. So uh, you you will not be voting on this. I do not mind. Similar to last time, uh, if you participate in discussion. I'm not sure that that's off the table. You obviously add, add a lot to our discussion, including our last meeting. So if there's anything that, you know, you, you feel the need to, to comment on, I, I do not have a problem with that, but you will, will not be voting. Understood. Thanks. Uh, very good. So, uh, back to the applicant. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And again, Scott Anderson and here with Steve Del Sono for Verizon Wireless. Um, as you had noted, uh, Mr. Chairman, we talked about a bunch of issues. I think as we left the last meeting, we had two outstanding items to, to nail down. The first was we needed to move the equipment installation outside um, off kind of undeveloped land and into the parking lot footprint. Because as you remember, we had an issue that the site was already over its uh, percentage for developed area. So we had to use an existing developed area so we were able to work with the church to relocate the equipment to be located on a portion of the parking area that works for us, gets us onto a, an existing developed surface and puts it in a place that the church can still manage for parking and, and um, snow removal and the like. So um, we were able to do that and move that. And I think that resolves the issue that came up under shoreland zoning of making sure that we were on top of some area that had been previously developed. Um, the second uh, piece was um, for Kyle to check in with the town attorney on the question of whether the equipment needed to be installed inside the church along with the antennas. Um, and so Kyle reached out to, um, uh, to Roger and Roger came back on this issue and said, no, the equipment does not have to be inside the church. The ordinance, I, th I think as we talked the last time, the ordinance talks about the antennas specifically being located inside the structure. Our antennas will be inside the structure. And Roger had noted that there's nothing in the ordinance that requires the equipment to go inside. And so we were okay with having it, uh, the equipment installation done outside. 
I think we talked about it's a relatively minor installation. It'll be surrounded by a fence. It's now in an area that's been previously developed and will largely be surrounded by cars from time to time. And so um, I think that at least the two items we left with were resolved. Um, a third item came up, I think, as you all know, uh, in Kyle's discussions with Roger, he posed the question of whether or not this type of installation in a church steeple would meet the definition of accessory use. And um, kind of for the legal nerds, it's a question um, of whether or not we are customarily incidental and subordinate to the church. And I think what Roger noted was, well, we're clearly subordinate. This is still a church. It's going to operate like a church. And the fact that there are antennas in the steeple is not going to change that. So he was comfortable with the subordinate part. But the question was, are we customarily incidental? And I think the way Roger put it is, is it kind of common to find wireless installations in church steeples such that it is a kind of a customarily customary use that is incidental to the use as a church. Um, and so initially, I think he had sent an email out to Kyle saying, well, from what I can tell, probably not. You know, the, it would be customary to put this on a police station or a fire station or other buildings that have existing antennas, um, but maybe not a church. And so we kind of circled back with Roger and Kyle um, to kind of talk about these types of installations. And I think what kind of Roger came away was his second email, which is basically Verizon has the burden of showing that these types of installations are customarily incidental to church steeples um, in a situation like this. So go ahead, Verizon, take the old college try and see what the planning board thinks. So um, on the 10th of July, we submitted an additional letter with some information about the use of church steeples for wireless facilities. Um, and I just want to kind of run through the really kind of three, three points. So, you know, answering the question of has it become kind of customarily incidental to find these in church steeples, especially in New England, especially in downtown areas? We think the answer is a clear yes. And there's really three uh, reasons that we kind of walk through in our letter. Um, the first is we, we gave you kind of a rundown, a snapshot of the church installations that we're aware of as a group. Um, over the last decade or so. And there were about 20 or so. Um, two, I just wanted to flag in Maine, one of which Camden I was involved with about a decade ago. Both the Camden and um, um, Kittery sites are perfect examples of why we use church steeples. You've got two towns in Maine that see enormous increase in cell phone traffic and population during the summer months. Um, you are not going to put a 200 foot tower in downtown Camden. I don't care how wonderful you are. And so we have a problem in a lot of downtown New England areas where we have a lot of people, a lot of coverage and now capacity issues with lots of people using their phones for things that we didn't used to use our phones for. And how are you going to provide that improved service in these kind of downtown and village areas um, when you can't put towers, because most towns will just not let you put a tower in the downtown area. So we have been turning the church steeples for over a decade, and they're perfect for a couple of reasons. And <laughs> Peaks Island as well, says Tom. Thanks, Tom. Um, they're, they're perfect for a couple of reasons. First of all, they're tall. They're located downtown just where we need to be, and they're full of air. Um, these are not rooms, they're not storage, there's no utilities up there. So they're empty architectural items that are up high, just where we need the antennas to be. They're big enough in volume that you can put a couple of panels to provide really good coverage. And so carriers have been looking to church steeples increasingly over the last 10 to 15 years to help provide coverage in downtown areas where new tires are not required. The second big thing that shows that this is becoming very common is a lot of uh, uh, other municipalities in Maine, I gave you a list of a, of a bunch, um, have uh, indicated and have identified bell steeples or steeples as so-called alternative tower structures. And these are structures where carriers are either supposed to explore first, even if they can install a new tower, 
oftentimes you have to show that you can't go in a church steeple before a town will let you build a tower, even if towers, towers are permissible. Or at a minimum, these are uh, uh, alternative tower structures are uh, locations where wireless facilities are allowed when towers are not allowed, which is very similar to the situation we have in, in, in the town of Orono. And so the ordinances that are being drafted to kind of govern the development of these networks is recognizing that steeples are an integral part of building out these networks and doing it in a way that doesn't result in the use of new towers. And then um, as Tom just arced in to talk about um, uh, uh, Peaks Island as an additional place where we've got a, a, a wireless in, in a church steeple, uh, we've been working with Tom on this site and his a company called Steeplecom, uh, and I sent you a link to their website. Literally, Tom's company does nothing more than connect churches with wireless carriers for mutual benefit. It allows the carriers to improve service. It provides revenue for the churches. And so we actually have now a company that exists trying to partner wireless carriers and churches up because it is becoming so common to install these facilities in church steeples in New England, New England downtowns. Um, and then just kind of the last thing I would say is in the conversation that we had with Kyle and, and Roger, and Kyle can speak more to this, I, I think the sense is that, that when Orono revised its ordinance to create this accessory use um, provision, um, this was the type of site that was contemplated. Something downtown, a place where you don't want a new tower. It's not gonna be on the outside of a building where you can see it. We're not gonna be building fake flag poles or fake this or fake that. We're gonna be able to use an existing structure so that when the, when the um, antennas and the system is installed and turned on, there will be improvements in cell phone coverage, but no one, literally no one will know that the, that the system is there and it is operating inside the church steeple. So kind of when you look at it from big picture, we think that this is the type of facility that the ordinance amendment that you recently enacted was intended to address. And so for all those reasons, we think kind of answering um, the town attorney's question, are these customarily found in church steeples? The answer is yes. And therefore we think we qualify as an accessory use and um, we ask for your support and a positive vote on our proposed application. Um, and with that, Mr. Chair, we'll turn it over to questions from the board and be ready to hear comments from the public. Very good. Uh, before that, what I would like to do, Kyle, could you provide your summary, uh, you know, recent discussions with, with the town attorney, uh, just giving us an update. Again, uh, I did say that we had, had resolved, uh, based on quite a bit of discussion and feedback, resolved some of the issues last time. Uh, I, I agree that the issues that were mentioned were, were really what we should focus on this evening uh, for our deliberations. But Kyle, can you uh, give us your take, please? Uh, yes, so that's correct. Uh, the two issues um, that were outstanding sort of from the last meeting, as Scott mentioned, were the lot coverage issue because the property is located, uh, majority of it in the shoreland zone, you can only have 20% uh, of the lot covered in an impervious non-vegetated surface. So uh, by providing that amended site plan and showing that the equipment area would actually be located on the parking lot, uh, that addresses that concern and uh, staff had no remaining issues with that issue. Uh, as far as locating the equipment outside, again, uh, Scott mentioned that in Rogers, uh, the town attorney's first email, uh, he noted that, uh, you know, were this to be considered an accessory use um, and meet the exemption that the supporting equipment uh, would merely be considered ancillary and not have to be located inside the church. So locating it outside uh, was fine and not a barrier to approval for the project. Uh, so then that brought us to sort of this new uh, third kind of issue that wasn't discussed initially. Um, and part of that reason, uh, Scott is correct, is that when the ordinance was drafted, uh, you know, and the list of exemptions for wireless telecommunications facilities was updated, um, it was addressing a number of things. It was addressing, you know, commercial businesses being able to have a satellite dish without, you know, requiring planning board approval or being a non-conforming use. It was 
uh, but one of the, the big intents of that ordinance was to allow uh, smaller scale projects like this uh, to be located in districts where bigger uh, towers weren't allowed um, so long as they were uh, not visible and you know, completely hidden within an existing structure. So it's correct that that was uh, uh, you know, one of the reasons uh, for that amendment in the first place. Um, so when we reached out to Roger originally to ask about you know, just the equipment being located outside, um, he brought up the definition of accessory use. And as Scott said, that it's supposed to be subordinate to and customarily incidental to the principal use of the lot. Um, so we had a conversation, uh, I guess a week or so ago, um, between the applicants, myself, uh, Dave Milan, and Roger Huber, uh, just to talk about uh, that definition more and uh, you know, how this project fit in with it. And you know, as Roger mentioned in his follow-up email, and as you know, Scott kind of summarized before, um, you know, I viewed that conversation in the same way. Uh, Roger stated that uh, customarily incidental can be something that changes over time. So what might have been uh, considered customary 20, 30 years ago uh, could change uh, today. So just because uh, wireless antennas in a church might not have been considered a valid accessory use uh, you know, 20 years ago, um, as things change and as spaces are used differently for different purposes, uh, you know, what's considered an accessory use and what's considered customary uh, can kind of update and be changed and considered differently. Um, so it was uh, up to the applicant to demonstrate uh, that, uh, as Roger put it, that putting antennas in steeples is a common practice um, by showing that it's a common practice that would uh, sort of meet the uh, the customarily incidental standard, and the board would be able to make a if they found that uh, the project could be considered an accessory use, they would be able to make a specific finding that um, antennas in steeples uh, meet the definition of accessory use. Uh, I think it's important to note that this doesn't set a precedent for other types of accessory uses. So you're not making a decision that would impact a restaurant being an accessory use in someone's residential home. Uh, this is, it would be specific to uh, kind of this use as an accessory use and the church as a principal use because you're, you're saying that an antenna in a church steeple uh, meets the definition of accessory use because it's commonly practiced uh, at this point in time. Uh, so yeah, that was, you know, Roger uh, had asked that the applicant should, should show that information. Uh, they submitted the document on July 10th. I passed that along to everyone. Um, so really at this point, I think it would be important for the, the board to have that discussion of whether they think there's enough information there uh, that shows uh, that you know, the use of the steeple for the antennas would be considered uh, an accessory use. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, sure. Before we get into discussion, that is my recollection as well. I mean, during the comp plan process, think of the Main Street corridor downtown. These are the types of issues that we talked about to provide more flexibility to homeowners, business owners, uh, you know, in those areas to, to try to open up things a little bit more with, within reason. And I, I do agree that, I, you know, that that was the intent of our ordinance. Uh, again, they're, they're not always uh, drawn up perfectly, but, uh, you know, we, we find things over time. And uh, so we have a discussion before us. So before I go to public comment, I hope people have had a chance to, to read the, uh, the report provided by Scott and, and Verrill uh, regarding the, you know, the incidental uh, uh, comment. And I'd, I'd invite, invite your opinions on that before we uh, open this up. So and anybody and everybody, I'd, I'd love to hear from you uh, on your, your thoughts on that. 
Don't be bashful. No comments? All right, I, I did think it was a, a reasonable case to make. Uh, it, it was good to see there were main towns on that list. I think the uh, alternative structures comment uh, was interesting when you, you dig a little deeper. Uh, from what, what I read, uh, that is a, quite a reasonable case, in, in my opinion, uh, that, that it meets our, our definition because things, things do change over time. I, I think that's why we redo our comp plan in, in theory every 10 years because things change and you have to adapt. So that this could be one of those situations. So let's, uh, if there's no comment, I'm gonna open it up to the public uh, for their participation. And we, we need to consider this seriously because this, this is, you know, appears to be the, the, the last item uh, for this project that, that we have to consider. So let's, let's try. Well, we it. did just have a public comment come into the chat. I see that. Just because others are doing it uh, doesn't mean we have to. Who in Orno looks at 5G health concerns? I, I do want to go back to that. Uh, again, 5G health concerns. So uh, I think we addressed that in, in detail last time. Uh, this, this project does not propose 5G. It's 4G. Uh, we, we cannot, this board cannot look into the future to really think, you know, okay, if, if, if it changes over to 5G, I, I think we did uh, cover that and that if that were the case, this, this project would, would be back before us and we'd have to hear arguments uh, for and against a project like that. So, uh, no, certainly just because others are doing it, that that's not how we, we base our decisions. Uh, we're trying to digest information that's provided to us. And that, I mean, what others are doing is, you know, it can be a guide, but it doesn't mean we have to follow their lead. Other other comments, responses to that? Uh, Scott, do you have anything to add? I, I, yeah, just to reiterate, you know, if we came back with 5G, those would be different antennas yeah. to the board to address that. And I think we talked about some of the health issues at the last meeting. Yep, yeah. very good. Uh, other, Kyle, did? Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd also just say that the list of other towns that are doing this yeah. was uh, really an exercise in showing that it's a common practice and that the project meets the definition of accessory use. It wasn't so much um, the applicant showing that, well, this is common uh, in other places, so uh, it should be accepted here. It was merely proving uh, what the town attorney recommended was shown uh, yeah. in the demonstrating that it is common practice um, in other places that uh, antennas are placed in church steeples. And by doing that, that would mean that the practice was customarily incidental and meet our definition of accessory use. So just clarifying that that was the point of showing those other example locations. Yep. Thank you, Kyle. Are there other comments uh, from, the, from the public? Anything on your end? I'm not seeing anything on the chat other than that. I'm going to leave no, it No open other public it. comments. What's that? No other public comments, Phil. Okay. We're going to leave it open. I, I do want to hear from the board. I, I'd like to put it to, to each of you. I, I want to go around the horn. I, I would like your uh, input uh, and opinion on the material that was provided and whether you support uh, the contention that this is, you know, has, well, situation has changed so that this would now meet that, that incidental language. Uh, I'm just going on my screen. Dave, Dave, what do you think based on what we've been provided? I think we, uh, applicant has furnished the information we needed to make the decision. And I think that, it, that the, as far as I'm concerned, that this project need would get my vote for approval. Okay, thank you, Dave. John, what do you, what do you think? Oop. Muted, John. Yep. What do you think, John? Oop, we're still, there you are. I agree with David's response. 
wholeheartedly. I think they've okay. answered our questions. Okay. Uh, Joe? I agree. Uh, meet success for use and I have no objection. Okay, the, the incidental comment, I haven't heard any concern that they appear to have demonstrated that again, things have changed and now this meets the intent of our ordinance. That's what I've heard so far. Uh, is that it, Joe? Yep, correct. Right. Uh, Mike? I'm, I'm comfortable with everything that's pre uh, presented and the clarifications that Scott provided for us today, plus with the letter outlining everything else. Okay, thank you, Mike. Krista, what do you think? You're welcome. I think they've made their case. Okay. Uh, Judd, do you have anything to add? Or if you prefer not to, that's fine. I, I give me the opportunity. It's up to you. Sure. No, I'm, I'm, I'll abstain from the discussion. Thank you. Lisa, again, there was, there was a lot of discussion last time. Uh, sorry you missed it. <laughs> Maybe uh, we were doing something they a little more. They were very helpful. They were very okay. helpful. I think I got the gist of it. Yeah, I'm comfortable with it. Okay, uh, I, I review this pretty, pretty carefully. I, you know, it, it does seem like a, a reasonable option. Again, you know, historically, this, this is what we talked about in the, in the comp plan and, you know, it's a unique case, but I, I'm okay with that. Things, things change over time and that incidental use, uh, I, I think that's reasonable. This, this appears to be more common. It came up in our discussion and the only reason it would come up in our discussion is because it, it is, you know, not, not out of the ordinary uh, anymore. And trying to find creative ways to, to do projects like this uh, that, that meet our ordinance is, is, you know, what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, all right, last call for, for public comment. Going, going, gone. I'm gonna, bang that pen, uh, close the public hearing. So uh, comments, final comments from the board, anything for the applicant, clarifications from, from Kyle, uh, any, anything else? All right, uh, seeing none, we do have uh, just proposed findings of fact that were provided for our consideration this evening. So we're gonna go through those. Kyle drafted those up for us to consider as we're going through this, if we need to amend these or, or change them, or if there's concerns, uh, now's the time to do that. So again, I'm gonna step through these. We're not gonna vote on each item, but just give me that thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, once I step through each of our uh, requirements, our, our review criteria, so I can see that we, we have a consensus, Kyle, were you? You all set? I just saw you moving your pen. I didn't know if you want to add anything. Are we good? I am all set. I was just good. looking around. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Uh, these are proposed findings of fact for structure consulting group uh, for their site plan review dated July 15th, 2020, pursuant to Article 6, Section 18-177 of the Orono Code of Ordinances. The Orono Planning Board has considered the application of structure consulting group for a minor site plan for the placement of eight Verizon antennas within the church steeple located at tax map 27-2, lot 55 in the village commercial district. And based on all evidence presented by the applicant, reviewing agencies, town departments, and the public found the following. Number one, requirements of the district that the proposed project is allowable in the village commercial district as an accessory use, and that the proposal complies with the applicable dimensional requirements of the district. Furthermore, that the applicant has demonstrated through a document dated July 10th, 2020, that wireless antennas within a church steeple meet the definition of accessory use in section 18-31 of the land use ordinance, and the accessory use is considered to be both subordinate and customarily incidental to the principal use of the lot based on the evidence provided by the applicant, showing that placing wireless antennas within a church steeple has become a common practice. Are there any issues with that? This is the big deal for our discussion. Any issues? Can I see a thumbs up, please? All right, that is unanimous on that. Number two, compliance with town ordinances and codes that the proposed accessory use meets the provisions of applicable regulation, uh, regulations of the town, including all pertinent sections of chapter 18 uh, of the land use ordinance. Are we all good? All right. 
Uh, number three, utilization of the site, that this construction is within the natural capabilities of the site and is located in a suitable area of the site. They moved the, the outside equipment again. I think you saw that on the site plan. Uh, site plan, I don't believe there are any issues there. Are we all good with that? All right. Uh, four, traffic and pedestrian access, that the added accessory use will not generate any additional traffic to the site and require no access by the public. We all set? All right, uh, five, storage of materials, that there will be no exposed storage of materials. We good with that? All right, uh, stormwater management number six, that no changes to stormwater management are expected as a result of this project, all good? Uh, seven, erosion control, that the project will take proper erosion control measures if needed, all set. All right, uh, water supply, this is number eight, water supply and sewage disposal, that there is no change in water or sewer capacity needed. Uh, you okay? Uh, nine, uh, utilities, that adequate provision has been made for all utilities, we okay there? Uh, number 10, natural features, that adequate provision has been made to preserve the natural features of the site. We discussed this at length at the last meeting. I think they've accommodated that. We good? Uh, number 11, groundwater and surface water quality protection, that the proposed project does not adversely impact either the quality or quantity of groundwater available to abutting properties or to public water supply systems. We okay with that? Uh, uh, 12, hazardous special and radioactive materials that the use of the site does not involve the handling, storage, or use of hazardous special or radioactive materials. We okay with that? All right, 13, shoreland relationship that the site is within the limited commercial shoreland zone. However, no new impervious cover will be created as a result of the project. Are we okay with that? They demonstrated that with the moving of the, the pad. All right, uh, 14, solid waste management and no changes to solid waste management are proposed. We okay? All right, uh, 15, historic and archeological resources. This, that the site is not known to contain historic or archeological resources. We okay? 16, financial capacity that the applicant has the financial capacity to carry out the project. We good? All right, uh, lastly, 17, noise and lighting, that the facility will operate within the noise and lighting standards and town ordinances. We all set with that. Very good, those are the proposed findings of fact. Uh, I didn't hear any additional comment. I think we've covered this quite thoroughly. I appreciate all the input. Uh, I believe we're, we're ready for a motion. Someone please, other than, than Judd. Anybody want it? I'll, I'll do it, but I might need help with how we word it. Yep, just uh, right off the, I mean, you can either read, you know, right off the agenda item. That's, that's probably the simplest. Lisa, we have no additional uh, conditions. They have, they have met the, the one recommendation that, you know, the, the one issue. So we really have no conditions other than what we've already discussed. I would say that, uh, I think yep. I forgot to put on the report, one condition that should be added, just the usual, uh, that the project will uh, obtain the necessary uh, building permit from the code enforcement officer uh, after planning board approval. Did you get that, Lisa? What he said. Yeah, <laughs> okay, take, okay. A, take a crack at it, we'll, yep. we'll, we'll get it done, all right. I, I move that we approve the um, application for a minor site plan review uh, located at 36 Oaks, Oak Street, tax map 27-2, lot 55. It's a village commercial uh, district with limited commercial shoreland. Um, and this is for uh, a Verizon, I don't know how you want to say it, but just would allow Verizon wireless, wireless to place equipment within the steeple of the structure. It's, it's, yeah, that's we, but, okay. It would allow Verizon wireless to put um, equipment within the steeple structure. Very good, with the, the one condition that they, yeah. I'm gonna ask you to, to get it on the record other than, yeah. 
um, the, the, the they, the, they, they get the, um, the building code um, approval. Yeah, building, building permit building from, from the code enforcement officer. That's it. Yeah, building permit from the code enforcement officer. Great job, Lisa. Good, good to have you back. All right, we have a motion. Can I have a second, please? I'll second it. Okay, uh, Mike, you, you were quickest on the mic. Uh, there we go. Uh, so further discussion? Uh, Jessica, I'm going to need a roll call from you, please. Dave Thompson? Couldn't hear you, Dave. Just want to make sure. Approval. Got it. Thank you. John Beckett? Yes. Jess Brecker? Approval. Michael Costello? Yes. Chris Schwenzer? Yes. Judd, can you confirm for the record that you're abstaining? I abstain. Lisa? Buck? Yes. Phil Rock? Uh, yes. And before we go, I do want to thank the the public for all all the input uh, on this project. Uh, we we understand the concerns. Uh, you know, we we address those the, the best of our ability. But uh, thanks for all the public input. Uh, congratulations on your approval. Moving on. Next up, we have. Phil, a, yes. Sorry to interrupt, but just so that it's on the record, that was uh, seven four approval with one abstaining. Correct. Thank you, Jessica. Great. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Appreciate it very much. Thank, thank you, guys. Can I ask for something? Yes. Yeah. Um, can we attach the uh, information that we got that uh, shows that these uh, steeples are commonly used for this purpose now? To the minutes? Oh, certainly. As part of our record. Yes. Yeah, we always keep yeah. everything part of the application as part of the record. Um, but there, so there will certainly be uh, a reference to the document in the minutes. Um, we, I mean, we could also attach the document itself to the minutes as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that in this case. Critical. Yeah, I'll take a look at how long it is. If we have to, I can work with Kyle to maybe excerpt part of it for the minutes. I, I do think it's important to, again, all these things that we can clarify so that we don't have to cover this issue. Obviously, you know, land use ordinances, there's, there's so many things you can fix the deeper you dive in, but just so that it's clear for applicants in the future, you know, what, what this precedent is. So, it, you know, I know there's a list going for ordinance uh, revisions or improvements, but please add that to list and hopefully we can make this clearer uh, for the next applicant. Great, thank you all, appreciate thank it. Thank you. Well, good night. Uh, Next up, we have a continuation of a discussion on a proposed land use ordinance amendment to section 18-130, excavation, removal, and filling of lands. Just want to remind you that, boy, this one was a, a ways back when we started this. We had a really good discussion uh, about, you know, several issues, and, and we got toward the finish, but my recollection is that because we had so many edits throughout that document and really good discussion that it we just wanted to see a cleaner copy and, and just make sure all those issues were resolved before we made a judgment and then uh, pass it on to council for their review public hearing consideration all that so that that's where we're at i think we're just kind of tidying it up because kyle your your uh staff you, you and uh, jessica made all those changes. So it, I was wondering if you could just, because it's been a little while, uh, just highlight, you know, bring us, bring us back a bit and, and, and help us out uh, so we remember everything and, sure. and just highlight the, really what we're, we're discussing. So, sure. Please. So in, was it February, uh, was the first time we discussed this. Uh, so this is our excavation, removal, and filling of lands. Uh, uh, section of the uh, performance standards article in the land use ordinance. And so the, the ordinance originally, uh, the section split uh, projects into sort of three tiers. There were those uh, earthwork activities that required no permit at all. 
um, when you were working with under 20 cubic yards. And then when you were between 20 and 100 cubic yards of earth being moved, that would always be a permit through the code enforcement officer. And then any project where you're moving over 100 cubic yards uh, went to the planning board for site plan review. So yeah, we'll next. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so there were a lot of issues with the way the ordinance was on both sides. There were projects going before the planning board and being required to demonstrate things that weren't always necessary. Um, and there were projects that were being permitted uh, by the code officer that probably could have used uh, planning board approval and review. So the idea with uh, this ordinance amendment was to uh, kind of clean up this section and add some new standards in that take uh, more of a look at the impact of project rather than just uh, this very um, hard number being the the deciding factor. So for instance, you know, we added standards, um, you know, like where you have any removal or filling of over 20 cubic yards of material on a lot under 20,000 square feet in the MDR, HDR, commercial to or village commercial districts. Uh, whereas that would have required just a permit through the code office before that now requires planning board approval. Um, even if it's, you know, in that 20 to 100 cubic yard area. Because, uh, you know, you recognize that these zoning districts are denser, uh, people are closer together, and that these smaller projects could still have a, a fairly impactful nature to them and on abutting properties. Whereas in the forest and agriculture or the low density residential district where lot sizes are much bigger, things are more spread out, uh, <clears throat> it might not be in, as impactful to the surrounding properties. Um, and nuisance concerns are less, and it you know is acceptable for that to to be just reviewed by the code office. Um, so, but the changes that were discussed last time, uh, as I mentioned in the the memo, the it starts off talking about some of the smaller, just kind of grammatical uh, changes that were made, some punctuation changing, uh, some words being changed. So I won't go too much into detail on those um, as those were sort of just quick fixes. The three big changes that were made since the last time. Uh, the first one was the idea of requiring all of these projects that went to the planning board to do a conservation plan and be reviewed by the Penobscot County Soil and Conservation District. That seemed like a fairly burdensome thing to ask for these projects that were right around the 100 cubic yard uh, mark. Um, so instead of making that a requirement, we shifted that to uh, one of the options that the planning board uh, can ask of an applicant. So if a very large project comes in in a very sensitive area, uh, the board can ask the applicant to do that conservation um, plan and you know, ask for feedback from, from the Penobscot County Soil Water Conservation District um, but it's not required for a project that might not be really uh, impacting uh, the land that much. Uh, the next one was something that I believe Jeremy had brought up um, and is very similar to the application that is following this discussion. Um, it's for, uh, you know, dealing with uh, earth moving activities when you're just uh, replacing or redeveloping an already uh, impervious area. So it could be repaving a parking lot or a driveway or something. Um, so there, we added a exemption that says, uh, you know, if a fill project uh, or earthwork project was simply maintaining an existing driveway, um, as long as it was not uh, more than 100 cubic yards, it was exempt from going to the planning board. So if someone had, you know, we just talked about, we added a standard in that said, if you're between 20 and 100 cubic yards in the MDR district, uh, that now has to go to the planning board. But this says that if the project is merely repaving a driveway and you're not adding any new impervious surface, um, 
that it's exempt from going to the planning board. So it's attempting to uh, require those projects that need further review to go before the planning board and to keep those projects that aren't impacting, um, you know, vegetated land, um, you know, keep those from needing to go to go before the board for additional review. The final change to the ordinance was kind of clarifying what clean means. Uh, if you go to the, the last page, uh, the last standard there, number seven, uh, it says, you know, the types of allowable materials used in earth moving activities shall be clean soil material. Um, so it was really uh, clarifying what clean meant. So we added a, a a sentence there at the end that said, any material used shall be free of solid waste construction and demolition debris and radioactive or hazardous waste. Um, yep. Just to kind of give some, some clarification. So those were the changes that were made. Uh, it's been a while, so if anyone has any questions, I can go into further detail on other parts of it. Uh, but that was pretty much it. Very good, thanks Kyle. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it has been a while, but uh, all those discussions, they all, all come back. We, we did spend quite a bit of time uh, reviewing this, so a lot of good comments earlier. Do you have any uh, additional concerns of those fix or address what we, we talked about? Any other changes, comments on what Kyle just presented? Now that you've had a chance to think about it constantly for, what, four months now? So, yeah. Dave? Yeah, I wasn't at the February meeting, so I probably should not uh, vote on this. Okay. I will say that this isn't a vote as it's a, an ordinance change. It's, uh, right. I mean, it's sort of a vote, but it's more of a recommendation to the, the council. Um, I think we, we have voted on our recommendations. If we right. just say, well, we're gonna pass it on as is the revised version, I, I will ask for people to, or Jessica to take that role. But if, yeah, if Dave wasn't there, that that's fine. Uh, other comments that it seemed to address what, what I recall, I, I have a, uh, no, go ahead, go ahead, you're up. Joe. The, the only concern I had was with regard to the same kind of driveway permit or after the fact permit we have, whether it's hundred cubic yards for an existing impervious driveway whether we could increase that. Uh, does it really make sense to come, have people come back to us that have a 200 or 300 cubic feet replacement of an existing driveway? So I just wonder for a replacement of already impervious, if, if we would allow that to be a higher number. That is something I thought of as well, since this you know next application directly relates to that standard. Um, if the board didn't want to give a specific number, um, you know, I could always just uh, recommend and take that back to to council that that topic be explored further as well. Usually, and again, I, I always wonder where some of our our uh, thresholds come from, and a lot of times there's other uh, ordinances that we borrow from, or you know, there's obviously a lot of resources out there. Do you happen to know? I, I just don't recall. Kyle, what the origin of, you know, 100 yards, not that that's magical, but uh, do you have any idea uh, to address Joe's point? Um, I'm not sure where it came from originally. Um, I haven't seen, there's no reference in the, in the ordinance itself as to why that number was, was chosen. Right. I mean, it, it, Joe, your, your point is good because it, you know, we'll talk about the, the next application and it, it's just something that, that appeared to fly under the radar, but they have a, from the picture, they have a really long driveway and that this applied. But, you know, we'll, we'll discuss that project next, but it's interesting. Your point is well taken because we'll, we'll, you'll see what happens with the next project. I don't know exactly what, what that magic number is, but that, that's, that's a good point. Uh, Judd, you had a comment as well? Well, I, I was going to, I was also not in the February meeting, so I don't want to yeah. open up a can of worms here. Um, 
you know, please comment. That, that's what we're uh, Well, I just had, so this 100 cubic yards would affect um, building the house, anything, right? Like if you're digging a... Uh, so, so real quick, because that seems like a very valid thing, but if uh, earthwork is part of a larger permit, um, either code permit or site plan approval, um, then it doesn't require a separate permit for the earthwork. It's all lumped under that. So if you get a building permit for a single family home, you don't need a separate earthwork permit. So essentially you can bypass this site plan review if you fall into another category. Okay, all right. Correct, the, like the, yeah. um, the RSU, the school project, um, you know, they were approved for um, well, wait, I, I was thinking, I was thinking more of those plans that like, say I'm putting a 2000 square foot addition to my, on my house and I'm going to take out 150 cubic yards right. to put that in. I, I'm not going to have to come before the planning board is what you're saying. I just got to go get a, a, a standard building permit still. Correct. Right. Okay. The building permit would cover that. And okay. Understood. Okay. Yeah, so that, that pretty much, <clears throat> excuse me, answers my main question. Yep, so I'm good. Dave, did you have something to add or you just, any, any thoughts on Joe's comment about 100? Again, we, we could, you know, punt that one down, down the road and, and leave it to council or well, we want to provide Kyle some, some guidance, maybe just do a little more research, then pass it on. I'm not sure that it needs, I'm just my opinion, Jed, I see it. But I'm not, not sure that we need to carry this out to another meeting if we come up to some either compromise or guidance for him to, to push it on the council. Judd? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say that I was just looking for that language again. To me, uh, 100 seems small if there's no expansion. And we say right there in the language. So I would, I would tend to concur with Joe, which is if you're essentially replicating what you have, why do we as a planning board want to see that? Uh, but I'm also Kyle, fine. You, yeah, go ahead. Again, good, good points. Kyle, do you, do you have any uh, quick, quick fixes here? Dave, I, it looks like you want to say something. Oops. It's about six dump truck loads, so that's not very much material at all. Yeah. You know, it's just not, an awful lot of projects is, are going to exceed that. Do you, have, do you have an opinion on a, uh, on a volume, Dave? I mean, if 100 does seem small to me no, as well. I, I think it depends on the type of project. Uh, it, it, what is the underlying soil that you've got to remove? Is it clay? You've got to get that out of there, whatever. Yeah. The depth, the width, all that affects the yardage. So it's yeah. more, I think it, 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 it's an arbitrary number. Maybe it, uh, it'd probably be hard to... I see Mr. Milan has made an appearance. Is that Mr. Chair? May I uh, may I add uh, some input to that question? Please do. The the reason why this uh, this uh, ordinance came here was a result of uh, complaints that we had received um, from folks who um, similar projects of of that nature in that uh, hundred um, hundred yard. Um, uh, projects had come in and it was causing problems with neighboring properties. One of the things that I would offer to you is a hundred yards is a big difference in the village commercial district versus a hundred yards in um, F and A. And so um, again, I, and in, in the reason why it's here was because um, there were there were public folks who felt that uh, 100 yards in a in a brought into onto a property in a in a neighborhood um, could have a very negative impact on the neighbors and that it should go to the planning board. Thank you. That that does make sense. So, given that, do we want to have perhaps uh, different standards? We do that for a variety of ordinances. Uh, to uh, Dave's point that. Well, both Dave's, it depends on the, the project, but in town, I could see that 100 yards, uh, you know, again, making sure that neighbors have some assurance. That's, again, that's what we're trying to do with our ordinances is to 
you know, uh, deal with those situations. So, you know, perhaps, you know, we have a, a, a higher threshold in uh, different uh, land, you know, land categories. So in, in FNA, maybe it's 200 yards, something like that. Any opinions on that? Or should we provide guidance? You know, that's something we did not discuss last time. I don't recall. I don't think we went, went anywhere near that. No, I, I think you're right, Phil, that uh, there should yeah. be a difference between whether it's in town or in the FNA. Mm -hmm. I'll just say that that was definitely one of the, the points and key things looking at changing the ordinance was moving to look at more, you know, the unique kind of situations of the different areas of town. So right. I think that goes along with what we were already intending to do. So if uh, yeah, if the board wanted to recommend a, a number or simply recommend uh, more research be done on what the number should be, then that's a valid thing to look into. Again, I think Dave mentioned it as well. Uh, you know, it, it seemed pretty arbitrary, but it makes sense to me where where it is in town. That that, that all uh, re really makes sense at the moment, but. But again, in the FNA, uh, the project that we're talking about next, that, that seems uh, a little excessive uh, for that particular use. So good, good catch, Joe. Um, and I, I think some good discussion. What, what are your thoughts? Do, do we want to just throw out a number and just say, you know, this is an idea and Kyle can confirm that and then have the council bring it up? Are people comfortable with that or do you, would you like to and I, I, whatever the board wants it, to consider this again, you know, if he comes back to us with a number and then push it on the council, the, what, it, what are people's thoughts on that? I have a question for I, Dave. I My, think, oh, go ahead, Krista. I, I think we have uh, two separate issues here. Mm -hmm. And that is the 100, the 100 uh, cubic yards being a <clears throat> line. Uh, being different in FNA than in village commercial. I think that's one thing. Yep. And then the other thing that came up was the situation where there already is a paved road, irregardless of how long it is. Uh, and does that have to come to the planning board at all if all they're going to do is fix it and put it back exact, you know, the way it was? It isn't, isn't going to impact anything. Uh, so I, I think we have two things going here. Okay. Right. You could have a situation where um, any just replacement with no new added impervious cover in any district um, is simply a permit code enforcement level thing, regardless of size. Um, and then you could also have, you know, for new projects that create new impervious cover in the FNA that could be set at 200 cubic yards to trigger planning board review instead of the 100. So yeah, it could be different. Yeah. I wasn't at the February meeting, but has anybody talked about best management practices? For example, if you have a long driveway on the side of a hill, then you're gonna definitely have to deal with runoff, silt fence and all that stuff. Whereas if it's on a level, you don't have that problem. Right, so covered under regular site plan review criteria. I mean, erosion control is always part. If if we had to review that, I think that would apply in that that case, wouldn't it, Kyle? Yeah, but there is also at the very beginning of the the ordinance language here. It was already existing language. Yeah. Um, it talks about any of these projects, regardless of uh, code enforcement, planning board. Uh, they all have to take best management practices for erosion control into consideration. So uh, that's sort of applicable to any earthwork project regardless. Okay. I, I, I like, uh, Krista, uh, again, helped form my opinion on uh, her comment that I, I think it probably is a good idea uh, if Kyle, you propose something and we get one more look at it. I, I don't want to uh, leave leave anything kind of half done and, and shove it on. I, I think that is a planning board. I, I think that's part of our responsibility. So I guess I've, I've, I was thinking we could move on to, to council, but I, again, a really good discussion. And now we've got two, I think, significant items. And 
and Kyle's point, so now we've talked about F and A, but I'm, I'm wondering all the other districts in town, and just whether, you know, whether, you know, we can look at those or, you know, it's not, it might not be as simple as, you know, 100 and 200, I, I'm, I'm not sure. And then uh, the other point that if there's exemptions or, you know, things where it doesn't apply, I agree. I don't, I don't want to see somebody repaving their driveway. That, that does not uh, seem to me to be something that this board should be uh, spending our time uh, approving. So comments on that would is good discussion again, but I, I don't really don't mind pushing it off and add another agenda item. To, so. We have a light agenda so far for August. So it seems like there would be room for it. All right. Uh, any other comments? Judd, did you have anything else or? I'm good. Uh, yeah. Um, it, would it make sense to, and this may be way over complicating things, but would it make sense to look at what percentage of, of, a, of a lot size is involved with the moving of the earth? So that would potentially give us some flexibility depending on where the, you know, what, what district it was in. I don't know whether other ordinances do it that way and maybe it's too complicated. I don't know. I think, well, I know lot coverage I mean, that comes into play, uh, even the project we just uh, talked about, cell towers. So a lot of coverage is, uh, I think there's other areas of the ordinance that might be considered, but good point. Kyle, do you have any opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, the lot coverage comes into play in general, you know, yeah. where you can't have more than a third of the lot um, be a structure. Um, but I do think that more than that percentage could be used for other sort of impervious surfaces like parking areas or things like that. So most districts do have that standard. Um, but as far as a calculation um, to determine uh, the amount of fill, uh, was something that I had thought about briefly at the beginning um, of kind of looking at this with the council, uh, just kind of went away from there and we used other standards to try to kind of say um, like that's really when uh, we developed the standard where the 20 to 100 cubic yards in these districts um, and projects that create a certain slope and projects close to the property lines those might have to go to the planning board where before they were just a permit um, so we kind of developed other standards in replace of something like that but yeah I think it's possible to look into that. Uh, thoughts again, good, good comment, Lisa. Do we want to see this one more time? That, that, that is my opinion, because again, we've... we got, we got here tonight thinking this was going to be easy to move forward, but we had so much discuss, discussion on it. And I think we're doing our due diligence. If we think we're going to pass this on to council, they would have hoped that we yeah, had sure. all this talk about it. I agree. So you, your point being that we, we should we, see that again? We should we see, see that again. Time. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree. I, also, because it's been a long time since we've discussed it, so it, it yeah. brings up new thoughts. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather get it right. I mean, that, that's what they're asking us to do, to review. And uh, this one, there's enough uh, gray area or things we need to, to look at. Uh, I, I, I'd like to get our eyes on it one more time. And maybe next time it will be simple, to your, your point, Mike, <laughs> you know. <so. clears throat> Are we okay with that? Do we want to just table this until the the next meeting? Okay, scratch that and it went to Zoom. Yeah. What's, what's that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Hi. <laughs> We're getting him back. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. I don't know that we need to motion or vote on that. I, can we just push it off, Kyle? Procedurally, I think that's fine. Sure. Yeah, I'll look specifically into... Right. Um, you know, possibly exempting from planning board review projects that are simply replacing um, right. existing impervious areas. And two, if uh, in the FNA or possibly LDR, um, if that threshold to trigger site plan review should be higher than 100 cubic yards. So okay. uh, that's what I was hearing. Those two things seem to be the, the biggest concerns. If there's anything else, uh, can look into that as well. I just have one request, and that is when we get it for August, can we get a printed copy of the whole thing? 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just highlighting the the, the changes so it's easy on us. Uh, sure. Yep. Yeah. Good. Uh, thumbs up on pushing this off till till next time. All right. Good. I, I think we're going to keep moving on then. Uh, good discussion again, as, as always. So next up, we do have one item under new business. This is a minor timely issue. Uh, minor site plan review application by Hetty Richardson and David Kotecki uh, for earth moving activity of over 100 cubic yards to pave the driveway located at 431 Main Street in the Forest and Agriculture District. Uh, I do see the applicant has joined us. This, your, your timing is impeccable as we review this, this ordinance, but uh, could you please just give us a, a summary of, of what you propose uh, and, and we can think on it for a little while. Are, are you with us? I, I see yeah, your I face. See. I'm not sure if, if you've frozen just, up uh, a I little bit. I just lost you completely. I have no more problem with you seeing me. I'm just trying to figure out how to do it. Yeah, that's what I wanted. You, and then you just all went away. <laughs> we can hear you. So that, that the audio is working. Okay. Um, I'm going to just try calling the Zoom meeting one more time and see if I get back in. Okay. So, Hetty, yes? I promoted you to a panelist. So, um, that's why you kind of went. Oh. Now she's gone. <laughs> yes, but she won't be able to rejoin as a panelist. So, we'll have to. Oh, oh there we go. Go oh, good. It, oh, there we are. It's stuck. Okay. Um, yes. Sorry, talking to someone here. Um, Yes, I missed a little bit of that, but you were going to—you were asking me to describe the project. Am I correct? Yeah, just just tell us what what you're proposing. I, I know this is uh, relatively simple, but uh, this is our procedure. So. Okay, thank you. Well, we live at 431 Main Street in Orono, and we've been here for 13 years. We have a driveway that comes up from the road, goes by the house, and has a small parking area in back. And uh, we, uh, in the spring of 2019. Uh, we're looking at having it uh, repaved and it is it was very frost heaved full of grass that kind of thing and uh, we got some estimates and picked one it was Wellman construction they were able to start work in the fall in September 2019 um, when uh, the man from Wellman came out and we walked around the driveway I was thinking about this when you were talking because uh, we had it's kind of an odd shaped parking area and he asked at one point, did he want it to even out? And I said, no, it's fine the way it is. But there's a little part where we back in to turn around and we're always sometimes driving just off the edge. And then we make big, in mud season, we make big hollows out and I have to fill them in. So could you make it one foot wider so I can turn the car around without going off the driveway? And he said that wasn't a problem. So I added one by 20 feet, square feet, to 20 square feet of paved area. Now, just beyond this parking area, there clearly the parking area used to be bigger. There's pavement coming up through the grass a ways farther out. There's an old gravel road that runs out to the barn that's under the grass, but I know where it is in the spring when I need to get a vehicle out there. Um, so there's other old impervious area. We didn't, so we, that's just out there and I'm not sure what we would have triggered <laughs> now if, if the ordinance was changed um, given that. But what we wanted to do for this project was the part of the parking area and driveway that was probably done the most recently, which was probably over 30 years ago. Uh, and so Wellman came in and they dug down, according to contract, 18 inches, just went straight down and uh, took out all the asphalt and the old gravel. And then they came in, they did work very quickly in a day or two, came in, put a new liner down and gravel and packed it and then told us that they needed to settle and to drive on it and they'd be back in a week to 10 days. And we drove on it and they came back and then they came back and had some more gravel and packed it some more and, and paved it. And that was last fall. Um, and it got through the winter fine. We didn't have any heaves. It was a nice project. And, um, uh, and I'm sorry we didn't get approval or a permit. It just honestly, neither of us had even occurred to us this would be something that would need a permit. Mm -hmm. well, very good. Uh, th uh, thank you. Uh, and then, Slightly sorry that, that, that you have to come before us, but uh, these are our ordinances and this is the way it works uh, as our ordinances are, are currently uh, written. So Kyle, you also provide us a summary. This is a, a pretty straightforward project, but uh, Kyle, if you just let us know based on your review, uh, please. Correct. So um, 
a driveway is not considered a land use. Um, so there's no actual you know, zoning issues with something like this. And because it was already existing, um, you know, things like, uh, you know, the curb cut and creating new impervious area that might create drainage concerns or stormwater concerns um, don't really come into play. Uh, mm -hmm. The one thing that we wanted to focus on, you know, as we just talked about with the potential ordinance changes, reaching out to the Penobscot County Soil and Water Conservation District was a requirement for this project um, because we haven't made that change quite yet of making that an optional item for the planning board application. So um, we asked the applicant uh, if they could reach out to the conservation district um, because it was such a seemingly small project. It was more of just a comment from the district uh, to kind of look at the project and review it and just to see if there were any issues that they identified. Uh, we got a letter back from them saying uh, from a uh, Amy Poli, oh, yeah. uh, district manager saying we have reviewed the site uh, and found that erosion control measures uh, were taken during construction at the site. They're adequate and we see no issues. Um, so that was really uh, pretty much the extent of, of the review and, and you know, looking into the matter. Um, the applicant provided some photos of after the project, um, you know, showing that the areas around the driveway are vegetated and, you know, seemingly no issues are present on the lot. Um, so really staff had identified no issues uh, at all with the project, um, other than it's an ordinance requirement that something like this right now goes before the planning board and uh, the applicant just simply didn't realize uh, that it had been a requirement. So is here for after the fact approval. Very good. Uh, thank you, Kyle. Uh, this is a public hearing, so we'll open it up in a minute. Uh, I'm going to ask for questions from the board. I, I, I don't have any. This is not something that I, I, in my opinion, that we should be reviewing. If somebody wants to repave their driveway after 30 years and our ordinance kicks in. I don't, I don't that's not the intent of, of uh, what, what we should be, be doing or the, uh, what's on the books. And so hopefully we can change it to provide a little bit more flexibility in the future. It, it does not help uh, the applicant at the moment, but uh, maybe we can improve our, our ordinances uh, for the next time. Uh, comments, questions from the, uh, the, the board to the applicant? All right, uh, I'm gonna open up the, I get to wrap my pen. Boom, open up the public hearing, uh, invite any comment. Jessica, have you, have you heard, seen any anything? Nothing's appeared in the chat. No, nope, no public comment for this one. All right, I'm gonna just leave it open for a little bit in case anybody is, is late coming. Uh, yeah, I, I really have no, Nothing to uh, ask you, uh, Hetty, uh, but here we are. Okay. No comments. I, I don't see anything in the chat, so uh, I'm gonna, you know, going, going, gone. Uh, public hearing is closed. And a last call for, for comments, questions from the board. I don't have anything. I, the only uh, would Wellman paving paving would they have suggested that a permit was necessary or? I, I think I actually saw in our application. Didn't you say that they've never come across this, Hetty? Is that is that what? Yeah, I read? we called them after we you know got the notice of violation. We called them and and yeah. they said in twenty years of doing residential driveways, they had yeah. never been required to get a permit. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I figured. Yeah, I mean, it, not all ordinances are, are perfect, and, and hopefully you can improve things over time. It, it, it appears that, uh, again, you've got caught up in this one, so we'll, we'll try to improve that. Uh, doesn't help you at the moment. All right, uh, any further comment? All right, we have proposed findings of fact, again, for the board to consider, uh, prepared uh, by Kyle for us to discuss if we step through this. Again, 
I'm what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to I'm going to pound down all through these, and at the end, I'm going to ask you for a thumbs up or, or a thumbs down uh, to to speed this up a bit. So I think with this one, we can just read them and and then have a have a final uh, thumbs up thumbs down at the end. All right. These are the proposed findings of fact for Hetty Richardson and David Kotecki for their site plan review dated July 15th, 2020, pursuant to Article 6, Section 18-177 of the Orono Code of Ordinances. The Orono Planning Board has considered the application of Hetty Richardson and David Kotecki for an after the fact minor site plan for earthwork in excess of 100 cubic yards located at tax map 33 in the Forest and Agriculture District and based on all Evidence presented by the applicant reviewing agencies, town departments, and the public uh, found the following. Number one, requirements of the district that the project is allowable in the forest and agriculture district and that the proposal complies with the applicable dimensional requirements of the district. Number two, compliance with town ordinances and codes that the project met the provisions of applicable regulations of the town, including all pertinent sections of chapter 18 land use ordinance. Number three, utilization of the site that this construction is within the natural capabilities of the site. Natural capabilities of the site is a repaving of an already existing driveway. Number four, traffic and pedestrian access, that no traffic or impacts to access were created as a result of the project. Number five, storage of materials, that there will be no exposed storage of materials. Number six, stormwater management, that the project is not creating any new impervious cover. Uh, I, yeah, I think that statement is still valid. We did hear that there was one foot by 20 foot, uh, yeah. but I believe there was gravel underneath. So I, I'm, that, that is- I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know <laughs> if there was right there or not, you know, I don't know. Yeah, but you also said there's I, other impervious areas. So I, I don't think that's an issue. Anybody have a, a problem with that? Good. Uh, seven, erosion control that the applicant provided for erosion control both during construction and permanently that meet uh, uh, that meets best management practices. Eight, water supply and sewage disposal, that there's no change in water sewer capacity needed. Number nine, utilities, that there's no change to any utilities. 10, natural features, that, the ad that adequate provision has been made to preserve the natural features of the site. Number 11, groundwater and surface water quality protection that the proposed project does not adversely impact either the quality or quantity of groundwater available to abutting properties or to public water supply systems. 12, hazardous special and radioactive materials that the use of the site does not involve the handling, storage, or use of ha hazardous special or radioactive materials. 13, shoreland relationship that the site is not within a shoreland area. 14, solid waste management, that no changes to solid waste management are proposed. 15, historic and archeological resources, that the site is not known to contain historic or archeological resources. 16, financial capacity, that the applicant had the financial capacity to carry out the project. 17, noise and lighting, that no additional noise or lighting were created due to the project. Due to the project. Are there any issues with any of those 17 items that I Read right off, everybody's good with that, correct? All right, uh, very good. Reading that into the record. Can I have a motion, please? <clears throat> Do you wanna try this one, Lisa, again? Go for number two, since you've got some familiarity. Lisa? She, I think she politely no, declined. No, no. But you take it, you do okay. it. I'll second you. <laughs> okay. I, uh, uh, I move that we approve the uh, minor site plan review application by Hetty Richardson and David Kotecki 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 uh, at 431 Main Street, tax map 033, lot 003, um, with one recommendation uh, that the applicant will obtain necessary after the fact permits from the code enforcement officer and resolve any remaining issues due to the obtaining of the permit after the fact. Very good. Uh, thank you, Judd. We have a motion, kind of a second. I second. There we go. Mm -hmm. it, it, quick on the draw there, good one. Lisa, all right, we have any further discussion on this? Uh, Jessica, I'll need you to, to read the roll again. You got it. John Beckett? Yes. 
Joe Sprecker? <coughs> Joe Sprecker? Need, need the, uh, need the uh, oral, yep. Yes, approve. Very good, thanks Joe. Michael Costello? Yes, approved. Chris Schwenzer? Yes. Judd McIntosh? Approved. Bill Rock? Yes. Lisa Buck? Yes. And Dave Thompson? Yep. That's Very eight good. four. Yep. No, no against. Uh, congratulations. Thank, thank you for uh, coming before us this evening. And thank hopefully we'll, we'll get it better the next time. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, well, other new business. I don't see any. Uh, next up, discussion. Uh, Kyle, can you give us a heads up? Uh, you said light agenda next week. Is that nothing but the ordinance or is that uh, something else? So we have a couple of um, conditional uh, permits that we gave out uh, at the start of the kind of staying at home uh, during the, the early months of the oh, yes. pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the agendas have been kind of full the past couple months. Uh, so I've kind of been holding off as they were pretty minor applications. Um, so it is possible that we can get to those as well as the, the ordinance that we talked about this evening, uh, if nothing else comes up. Uh, we have an extra week here this month, uh, the way the days fall. Um, so the meeting will still be the third Wednesday on, uh, I believe, the 19th. Um, but so there's still a week or so for applications that could come in, but I uh, haven't heard anything so far. Right. I, I'm just going to throw this out to the board. We, we have done this in the past. Uh, again, if it was just the ordinance, I'd, I'd be requesting that we... Uh, consider a month off during the summer. I don't, I'm not uh, suggesting anything, but in the past, uh, I mean, it is the summer. People seem to be more around this year for, for some reason this summer. Uh, but I, is there any desire? I'm, you know, we, we pushed, what, what Kyle's referring to is we made the decision early on, Kyle talked to me and we just said conditional approval, just proceed with that. They, they weren't anything yeah. Uh, that would cause a lot of heartburn at the time. And then, then we would approve them after the fact. So that's what he's referring to. He, he asked me on two separate projects. I said, yeah, we're not going to hold that up. Uh, Say one is a, a home business and one was a, a mobile food vendor. So yeah. a food so, truck. So pretty simple. So I guess here's my question. We can continue to push those off a month. I don't know if people uh, want, want to break, if that's even possible or whether we just want to, uh, I guess clean up some of these uh, issues. We, you know, obviously we, we resolve those two, and then the, the ordinance, so that we don't have to push that off to later. Any thoughts on that? I, I, I don't really have an opinion. But if if we don't have anything new that comes in, there's no reason if they've already got conditional approval just to push it back into September. Yeah, I mean, do people want a month off? I, I don't. These aren't critical, Kyle. I mean. Uh, I'm not sure that we have to ram, ram the ordinance through. I don't want to keep pushing it off. But either way, it's just, just the thought, because we've done this in years past. I, other, other comments? Do people want to break? Uh, what do you think? Well, it it seem, seems like we're all here. None of us are going anywhere. So <laughs> we, we might as well take, take care of these things and then have a light, lighter agenda in uh, September. That could be, there's, there's a chance I might be traveling, but if we're going to be doing this remotely, as long as the meeting's at 6.30, I, I think I can make that work. I'll just Zoom from a hotel room, but I, there's a chance I'm, I'm not going to be around, but I, I can attend the meeting, but from somewhere else. All right, other comments want to proceed? We've, we've had one September comment, and we've got one for August. I, I've, I threw it out there, but uh, John, what do you think? I stick to August, I think. I'm not going okay. anywhere. Okay, Joe, you're, you're a world traveler. What do you, what do you got? Uh, I would skip August if we don't have anything new, really. Okay, we got, we're two, two and 
two and two. Uh, Judd, what do you think? Oh, we're two to two. Can you come back to me? Because I want to be the final tiebreaker. <laughs> tie uh, honestly, I don't. It doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm good either way. Okay, yeah, sure. Fence, fence sitter. Lisa. <laughs> I don't care either. I'm here anyway, so I don't care. Okay, Dave. I don't care either way. Doesn't matter. All right, two to two. I'm gonna. I, I, I think we can pound through a meeting pretty quick. I, I'd kind of like to tidy these things up if, if we're around. So, sorry. <laughs> I, I brought it up. I just, I had people felt strongly about it, but if, if we're kind of ambivalent and people are around, again, not a, you know, if, if you're away, you're away, but uh, let, let's, let's deal with August and, uh, you know, maybe that means we have a light September, so. I'd know. say if, uh, if a different time is desired, uh, that could be discussed as well. Um, so originally at the beginning of the remote meetings, we decided on 6.30 because there was a council meeting that Wednesday, I believe it was a budget meeting. Um, those aren't uh, always happening. Uh, so the council meetings lately have been happening at four o'clock. Um, so I don't know if there's any desire to look at a different uh, time on uh, for next month's meeting. Um, but it's something that could be explored. I, my hunch is if, again, this, this is just my, my schedule. If I happen to be traveling, I, I, I can't really do too much earlier than that. Perhaps six sure. might work, but uh, I, I don't think I could commit just personally to too much earlier than that. So yep. that's looking out ahead. I, I can't even plan that far, but I think I'm, I'm gonna be away but I can uh, call in or whatever. Any, any desire to change it or is 6.30 work? I, I think with these items, I, I really think we can pound it out, uh, hopefully relatively quickly, as long as there's no other agenda items. Is that, is that 6.30 okay? 6.30 is good. Works for me. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll leave that, Kyle. Yeah, fine. All right, any, uh, we still have a vacancy, right, on our board? Yes, so uh, Jessica put out the uh, advertisement for the position, but again, if anyone uh, knows anyone interested, feel free to point them in our direction. You're, you're still now. going through the stack of applicants, is that? Yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. Yeah, they're lining up at the door. All right, uh, okay, last up is adjournment. Can I have a motion? Move, we adjourn. Nice, that was a good one, you were all over that. Thank you. A second for Thank Mr. You. Beckett, uh, further discussion? Well, we'll see you in August. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Night. Night.